Please like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Sitting outside this house in Nuevo Laredo, Mexico, I was feeling tired, I was sweaty, but most of anything, I was really hungry. I mean, I've been on a bus for 18 hours, but I was there, I was excited. A few blocks down is the USA, the land of plenty, the land of dreams that I hear so much about. So my dad came out of the house, still talking to this lady, I didn't know what they were talking about. I was only 15 years old. My dad comes to me and says, uh, we have a deal. She's going to bring you across the border for $50. I said, great, let's, let's do it. Let's, that's what we're here for. So uh, he said, uh, give me more instructions. He said, uh, just get on the truck and don't say anything. So I did, got on the lady's truck, sit down. We drove up to the bridge. 30 minutes later, I uh, reunited my family and uh, I had my first hamburger at McDonald's <laughs> in the other side of the border, Laredo, Texas. So uh, summer was over. I went to high school. I uh, remember that day like if it was yesterday, you know, my first day working in, I mean, walking in high school, walking on the hallways. It was, I was living the dream, feeling all cool, you know, like in, it was like being on all those movies that I love so much, like um, Teen Wolf and uh, Pretty in Pink. <laughs> I wanted to be her boyfriend, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> all these movies made me dream, made me dream the American dream. And, uh, being there, I thought, okay, this is it. I'm here, I made it. After this, everything is gonna be easy, right? So I wanted to play basketball, because I love basketball. Back in Mexico, I used to play basketball all the time. Just playing it made me forget about being hungry, about being depressed. So I got a little good at it. In high school, I wanted to try out. I went to the coach and told him, you know, I, I think I'm pretty good, I don't know what you think. He said, yeah, you can try it out. I just need a physical from you. I said, okay, I don't see a problem. I went to my dad. He uh, asked him, dad, I want to play basketball. Can... He said, no, you can't, because you're illegal. You don't have Medicaid? I said, like that, it's, uh, the physical is only like $25. But he still, he still said no. So I uh, forgot about basketball, because that wasn't going to happen. Next in line, it was uh, art. i am always been good at art, just drawing stuff. But uh, I couldn't fit in. It was getting really hard to fit in, you know, because they have an art, a little art club with, I tried to get in, but I couldn't because my English wasn't good. And uh, so I said, that's okay, that's fine. At that moment, I started to feel like uh, these words, you know, this, uh, not having this green card was gonna define who I am, who I was at that moment. So I got a little scared, but I said, okay, you know, it's, it's gonna take a little work. It's gonna take a, well, we'll be fine. So one, one time I got into a fight with this guy because he called me uh, a wetback and made fun of my accent. And I was really upset that day. So later that day, it was a Tuesday, I remember pretty well, I stayed after school with Mrs. Cordero, which uh, she's beautiful, so it was really easy to stay after school. <laughs> So there I am sitting on Mrs. Cordero's class, and uh, I mean, after school, she, it was just me and her, it makes it even better. And uh, she asked me, what's wrong, Juan? You look tense, you look tired, you look sad, what's going on? I explained the situation to her, what just happened earlier, and uh, she said, oh, don't worry about those kind of people. To those kind of people, the worst kind of wetback is the educated wetback. You just gotta focus on your education, because that's the key. That's what's gonna take you places. So I said, okay, let's get to work. We started practicing my ABCs, my bowels. And it was hard work after that. Years and years, I mean, four years, not years and years. But four years, <laughs> you know, sleepless nights with my Spanish English dictionary, translating this, the most simple of assignments. But I made it. I made it to graduation night. Actually, you know, when I was a senior, 
that uh, I, would, I could have graduated early in the year because I got so many credits. My, uh, my counselor gave me all electives the first year, thinking I was just another one in school one day and gone the next day, you know? This, what is this guy going to do? Just give him all electives. So I end up with a lot of credits before graduation. But let me tell you about graduation nine. It was, it was magical. It was like having these lights upon me when they say Juan Rodriguez. I felt like I won an Emmy, an Emmy you know, just <laughs> walking all cool, feeling like this is it, you know, and I'm, I'm living the dream, I'm, I'm a big accomplishment. This is it. I was just, I, that, night, that night was magical. I, I couldn't get enough of it. Then I came to an end, and then I got slapped in the face. Slapped in the face by reality. Reality that I couldn't go to college. And later that year, at, uh, I was accepted to Chicago Art Institute because I, I was such a good student and I was good at art. But uh, that night, that was so magical, ended up really sad for me. So college didn't happen. I said, no problem, let's move on. But, uh, my next option was Denver, Colorado. I went to Denver. A friend of mine had a job for me, you know, a job that would pay me $7 an hour, which is not much. But when you come from nothing, that was a lot to me. That was amazing. So I'd, uh, I worked at this packaging factory with a lot of people, a lot of Asian people, Mexican people that uh, they uh, didn't speak any English. I raced to the top real quick. I became supervising manager, and uh, but uh, there was something was missing. Something something wasn't right. I mean, I spent four years of my life working so hard. I think I can do a better, a little better than this. So uh, one afternoon, sitting on my apartment balcony, I was reading this newspaper, thinking, you know, if I want something better, I go, I better go out there and look for it. It's not coming knock. It's not gonna come and knock on my door. So I was reading to the newspaper, and while I was reading through it, I saw this ad. It said, uh, "You know, we need on machine operators. You know, to operate this uh, high-tech machinery to make our to make airbag inflators." That uh, sounded good to me. I said, "Okay, this is, sounds interesting. I gotta check it out. I like robots. I like technology. So it was it was awesome." And right at the bottom, it said, uh, "High school diploma." prefer. So that, that spoke to me, you know, like I could hear Mrs. Cordero's voice on the back saying, this is what we've been working for. This is you. This is your opportunity. And I remember, you know, all the cards that they gave me on graduation night saying what a great student I was and some of them even gave me money. And so I said, okay, this, this feels good. I, I, I got to give it a try. I got to give it a try. Call the guy. He answered the phone. First thing he said, do you have a high school diploma? I said, well, yes, I do. Okay, you have a job. Come and see me tomorrow. <laughs> I said, good. I'd, uh, I had mentioned it to my dad. And he said, uh, no, you can't. You shouldn't do this. I said, why not? He said, because you're illegal. He's going to check your green card, your fake green card, and he's going to say that it's fake, and you might even get deported. At that moment, at that moment you just struck pain on my heart again. Oh, I felt like, is this who I am? Is, I mean, is this, not having this green card, these words, wet bag, illegal, is, is, is that's, that's what defines me? That's what defines who I am? I said, I don't know, I just sit down helpless on my couch. I took a moment and I saw the picture on my coffee table, imaginary coffee table. I picture my high school diploma and my fake green card. And I've sort of tried to balance it, which, which one's got more power, which one defines me more. And then when I looked at my high school diploma, once again, the cute Mrs. Cordero was talking on my ear, <laughs> saying, Juan, this is it, this is, this is you. That diploma is you because you work so hard for it, because you want to be this person. But also have fear in my all the side, you know, my dad telling me, no, you can't. I'm not, I have nothing against my dad. I love my dad. Maybe he was just being protective because the danger is real. It was real. I could have gotten the porter. 
So, uh, but at the same time, I feel like by protecting me too much, he was holding me down. Just let me do this. Next day, I didn't go to the interview. I didn't call the guy. I, I was just depressed, working on my packaging factory again, trying to speak Vietnamese with some guys. <laughs> but something wasn't right. I, got, I had this thing on my heart that I couldn't let go of. Next day, the, I call a guy. He said, why are you lying to me? I said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, you lied to me about your high school diploma. I said, no, I have my high school diploma. Well, then come and see me. At that moment, I made a decision. I went and did my own decision, tried to define who I am, and not let this green card, def green card define who I am. So I didn't say anything to nobody. I just run down the street, I mean, down the stairs, grabbed the keys to my car, and went off. I walked into the office, feeling nervous, because I knew I had a fake green card on me, and my high school diploma, who was, that was like a shield. And uh, the guy is like, uh, nice to meet you. I said, yeah, nice to meet you. Do you have a high school diploma? I said, yes, I do. I show it to him real proud, because I was proud of well, who I am. And uh, he said, uh, do you have a, a green card, or are you a citizen or something? I said, uh, I do have a green card, sort of nervous. I do have a green card. He said, okay, just grabbed it, didn't even look at it, gave it to his secretary, and said, here, make a copy of this. But come, come Juan, tell me more about you. What kind of books do you like to read? How was high school with you? In that moment, I feel so good. I feel like I've accomplished something once more, but I still had this little pain on my heart, knowing that uh, something wasn't right. Here I am. I've been living illegally in this country for 22 years. If you run into me on the street, you will never guess I'm illegal. Why? Because I'm a normal person. I'm a parent, I have three kids, two girls, one boy. I have a job, I pay taxes. Just like everybody else pays taxes, right? So, I'd, uh, you know, it's, it's been hard being defined by that, but by not having my green card, by those words, illegal, immigrant, feeling like you don't deserve what you have. But, uh, but I'm tired of living in fear. I'm, try I'm tired of being afraid, you know? I guess standing here today, tonight, is to prove to myself that I'm not afraid anymore. <laughs>